Welcome everybody. This is Frank and this board is the PET 2001 that you have seen at the start of this video. The start was taken by the original owner of this 2001. This is the logic board uh, 32 zero 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 eight which is the first revision of the Commodore PET quite an historical machine dating back to 1977 and together with the Apple II and uh, the, the TRS-80 this was the first um, personal computer let's say personal computer sold uh, to the public and uh, the pet was the least expensive of the three and it, it was uh, the only one that had a monitor built in and a tape recorder uh, the other two had to add an external monitor or TV and external mass uh, st uh, storage uh, options so this pet is not working, um, but is it working enough that we have not the garbage screen, so the CPU is uh, executing uh, a little bit uh, before dying or uh, having problems. This board has the Commodore made uh, MOS technology actually, which was uh, acquired by Commodore at the time. It has MOS technology 6550 ROMs and 6540 ROMs that have no equivalent. And at that time, it made sense because um, with the particular uh, pinout and uh, configuration of these ROMs and RAMs uh, Commodore could save uh, quite a lot of uh, the coding logic uh, each uh, ROM and RAM gets the phase 2 clock from the CPU and has at least 4 to 5 select signals so there's no need for much decoding logic because uh, the way you wire the address lines to the various RAMs and ROMs uh, really is a kind of uh, decoding. So, in order to try separately the ROM and RAMs, I have to make adapters. So, this will be a long uh, troubleshooting at least for me I don't, I don't yet know uh, how long it will uh, last this video but for me it means I will make adapters uh, custom uh, microprocessor circuits to test uh, RAMs and ROMs uh, out of this circuit uh, so I can exclude the, the, the components so let's see what happens. Okay, let's see if we can make some progress with this uh, PET 2001. First of all, um, I removed the higher 4K of RAMs and lifted this little jumper that tells the machine that it has installed the uh, full 8 kilobytes but since I'm not sure about uh, all the RAM are working uh, rather I'm sure that some not working RAM let's see uh, after this how I know uh, so I left only the first K the first four kilobytes uh, sorry and lifted this jumper then I made uh, a socket adapter for the 6502 which is an op generator basically I cut the data bus and tied the data bus uh, 
to the configuration EA in hexadecimal, which is the knob of the 6502 uh, code machine. So when inserted the, the CPU with this code, it continuously reads through all address and always reads the knob which is hardwired on the data bus and so it generates all the addresses from uh, uh, 0 to f f f f and so on starting from 0 again so with this i can test all the address bus that goes to the rams roms uh, io chips and so on so I can test if the addresses are um, go through the buffers, um, the coding logic, and whatever else. So this is useful uh, to test uh, an unknown machine. Then I designed adapters to use standard static RAM in place of every 6550 but I ordered the PCB and they are being sent to me uh, in this moment also they signed adapters to use standard 2716 EEPROM in place of the 6540 and also these PCB are being made and will be sent probably after one month to me so in the meantime what I can do with this machine is uh, checking if the logic is okay. Uh, most of the ROMs should be okay because at every re reset uh, the video RAM gets cleared correctly. I can see that on the screen because it starts with garbage then after the reset is uh, lifted uh, the RAM uh, gets cleared and I have a black screen. So that most of these ROMs are working, at least the, the kernel and the editor. Also with 4K I can sometimes boot in the basic with an error and use the keyboards and some commands. So part of the basic ROMs are working also. Before proceeding, this is the situation when uh, the machines uh, can boot to some kind of basic with some errors and so in this situation I know these two uh, RAMs are okay because the screen gets cleared uh, character appears if I hook up a keyboard I can type every character and so the video RAM is working so I know these two chips are mostly working uh, if I substitute a bad chip on one of these uh, two video RAMs I'll show you what happens this is one bad video RAM you see every character has one bit always high this should be 20 next decimal and this is uh, I don't remember but I think it's 21 and so I substituted this RAM and this as a, a stuck bit high so I know this is a bed and I've found two uh, bed rams so far with this method so I also made a um, custom circuit that I was actually using for testing other kind of ram and roms I made an adapter to test the 6550 uh, bit the firmware to test uh, 6550 and 6542 and so I can confirm there are two uh, bad 6550 on, uh, on this pet board uh, this confirms the test I've made using the video RAM sockets for them so to address the problem with the 6550 RAMs I've made uh, some adapters to use uh, 2114 kind of RAMs into the 6550 sockets and these are two 2114 that I'm putting the video RAM sockets of this pet 
and it works at least uh, the video is, is okay and then all the 6550 that was good uh, been placed in the main eight kilobyte of RAM. Okay, now I made an adapter to test uh, the 6540 ROMs uh, out of the bed. And this particular one is looking bad, so FF, which is not possible, of course. Uh, the bedroom was in uh, UH6, this position, which is uh, UH6 is the last uh, 2K of the basic at D800. And um, so, what I'll do at this point um, is populate this uh, adapter. PCB that I designed it to replace uh, a 6540 with a normal 2716 EPROM and try to use the, the replacement in this uh, UH6 position, see if the bed works. So I completed an apto. Um, then programmed the 2716 EEPROM with the correct uh, code image for the original uh, ROM and then it works of course you notice that he has only 3071 bytes free but that's because I forgot to solder back this jumper and so the machine doesn't uh, know it has eight kilobytes instead of four so uh, let me solder back this jump and try again and of course now it sees the complete uh, 8k eight kilobytes of the original ram so now it's time to Connect the keyboard, connect the tape uh, drive, uh, and test the various ports. Um, so, I hope it's solved with this uh, uh, minor substitution. And this old PET doesn't want uh, is now probably working back as it should. So by now this uh, PET 2001 is working well. I executed the, as you have seen, um, IEEE 488 test. I tried to uh, communicate with CBN link through the user port and it works well. I tried both the tape ports and everything is working good. But um, as a final, um, part of this video I will try to explain uh, an alternative method for testing uh, 6540 and 6550 if you don't want to make a separate uh, test setup for, for these for these chips so basically you can test uh, all the ROMs and the RAMs but you need an adapter to use a normal 2716 EEPROM on UH7 and download the program that I'm linking on the description of this video and this program just makes a test of the ROMs and you see it says H6 empty but H6 is the broken is populated with the broken uh, ROM the original ROM and it can test the H7 in H6 if you H7 is the one you have to remove to use this uh, this problem for testing the machine 
so that's easier for sure that than making a complete test setup like I did and um, can test also uh, the rest of the machine because uh, it's uh, testing the, the ROMs, the ROMs and everything so you can look around uh, at the various signals so it's uh, worth having uh, an image of this test 3D if you intend to work on a 2001, on a PET 2001 so that was probably easier for me but now I have a complete setup to test uh, RAM, uh, ROMs uh, outside of a PET board so that would be a uh, good thing anyway so this one is repaired thank you for watching